Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the filter dryer, the solenoid valve, and the liquid line site locations on an automatic pump down refrigeration system. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Danfoss, and you can access their free training programs through the link in the description section below. So this is the whole outdoor unit, and here you have the receiver tank, and here you have your service valve on the side. These can typically be either on the side or on the top of the receiver tank. And this is a three position service valve, otherwise known as a king valve when it's on the receiver. And there's a couple things I want you to know about this. So what happens is this solenoid right here is going to stop the liquid flow. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have nothing going to the indoor evaporator coil. So the refrigerant's getting pumped back down into the outdoor unit. So how a pump down system works is once the indoor box reaches its set point, the solenoid right here is going to shut off the liquid line flow. And what's going to happen is the subcooled liquid is going to stop right here and it's going to be stored in this receiver tank. So the refrigerant flow is coming out of here, coming this way. It would normally come through here, through the site glass and over to the thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor coil. But if this shuts the liquid flow off, it's basically going to back up into the receiver tank. And the receiver tank's job is to store subcooled liquid refrigerant. So you want to have these three components in the order that you see here. The thing is, it would be beneficial to have the sight glass over right before the thermostatic expansion valve if possible. But if not, this location out here is okay as well. But basically what you want to do is you want to be able to see while the system is running on the sight glass, you don't want to see any bubbles. You want to just see a clear liquid going through there. And if this was right before the thermostatic expansion valve, then you'd be able to tell that you're not losing subcooling before you're getting to the thermostatic expansion valve. You want to make sure that you have a full liquid flow to the TXV in order for the metering device to operate correctly. The second reason that you want to have the sight glass after the solenoid is when the solenoid shuts off the liquid flow, you can then watch the sight glass and make sure that you don't actually have a little bit of liquid getting through there. So say this got hung up partially and it's not doing its full pump down procedure, then you'd be able to tell by looking through the sight glass. In reference to the filter dryer, the reason that you want to have it behind the solenoid is because if you had it after the solenoid, so downstream of the solenoid, then what will happen is every time that this pumps the system down, you're going to have very low pressure low temperature refrigerant in this filter dryer. And what's going to happen is this is going to end up icing up and it's going to end up rusting. So you're going to have a lot of condensation on the filter dryer if it's after the solenoid. So if this was after the solenoid, you're going to severely lower the life expectancy of the filter dryer just due to rusting. If the filter dryer is a brazed inversion, then it's likely that the paint might have already been burnt on the sides. So any condensation is going to start the rusting right right near the braze joints, right here and right over on this side. So you want to keep that on the high pressure, high temperature side of the system. The other thing is you want to have the filter dryer before the sight glass because if this were to get clogged and this was open, then you could tell right over here at the sight glass by seeing bubbles. So it, it would have a pressure reduction here and it wouldn't be letting the full liquid flow through and you'd be able to notice that potentially at the sight glass. So since we already went over the sight glass location and the filter dryer location, that means that the solenoid will be in between the two of them. So those are the points that I wanted to get across to you today. If you're looking for a refrigeration cycle video for a walk-in box, I have that linked in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.